Bill O'Reilly here, Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening across our nation. President Biden admits more foreign refugees. Rudy Giuliani says the FBI is out to frame him. The mayor of D.C. bans dancing at weddings. 25% of adults say they will never get the COVID vax. Anxiety now keeping four in 10 Americans awake each night. Also ahead, climate change. Boy, is it expensive. But first, the Biden administration quadrupling the number of refugees allowed into the USA. The cap will be raised from 15,000 under President Trump to 62,000. 22,000 slots will be allocated to people from Africa, 13,000 from the Middle East, 6,000 from East Asia, just 5,000 from Central America. But as you know, hundreds of thousands of migrants have passed into the USA in the first 100 days of the Biden administration. They are here illegally. The stats that I mentioned are legal refugees. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani accusing the Department of Justice of framing him. After the FBI raided his apartment last week, Giuliani telling Fox News, quote, the only lawyers they raid are lawyers for Donald Trump, unquote. The DOJ insists the search was part of an ongoing probe into Giuliani's alleged relationship with foreign agents. Washington Mayor Muriel Bowser allowing weddings to go forward. However, you can't dance. Not even the twist. Mayor Bowser saying it's too dangerous to dance at weddings in the age of COVID. New poll from NPR says one in four Americans will never take the COVID vaccine. Young Republican men, the biggest deniers, with 42% saying no way they're going to take the medication. Medical experts estimate between 70 and 85% of folks need to be immune from COVID before the disease disappears. New survey from one poll says that Americans are increasingly anxious about the next 24 hours, so-called next day anxiety, causing 41% of us to stay awake all night. 61% say they've lost some hours of sleep due to stress. Respondents blame COVID, financial problems, and the hateful political climate. In a moment, Mr. Biden wants us to pay big to stop climate change. That's next. By now, you've heard me speak about Jeff Brown, my go-to tech expert, and his firm, Brownstone Research. His firm called the exact peak of the dot-com boom and just issued another major prediction. So if you've got money invested in the market, especially in popular tech stocks, this is critical information. Jeff sat down with Tech Minute's Chris Hurt to discuss something shocking he believes is on the verge of happening. So you can watch that interview at bill5g.com right now. That's bill5g.com. Jeff's top-notch newsletter provides my listeners with research to let them know of the best tech companies and the biggest market opportunities before they appear on Wall Street's radar. It's the only way to win in the market. Jeff's track record speaks for itself. He's recommended the number one tech stock of 2016, 18, 19, and last year, 2020. His subscribers have seen gains such as 432% and more, sometimes in mere days. Watch Jeff's warning at bill5g.com. Bill5g.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. Big government spending to reverse climate change. As you know, President Biden is a big green guy. Now, calling him the jolly green giant would be immature so I am not going to do that. But the total cost of Mr. Biden's Green New Deal and green infrastructure programs could be as much as $4 trillion, and that's taxpayer money. That's a lot of corn. Little reference to the jolly green giant there. Is it not? So, where will all that money go? Well, main goals include clean energy programs, construction of solar farms and wind turbines, Elimination of fossil fuels, expansion of electric vehicles, creating charging stations everywhere, and making the entire economy carbon neutral by the year 2050. 
Also, there will be new spending on the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. $11 billion for those people. Boy, they'll all get raises, I guess. New spending on the National Science Foundation, $10 billion. I don't even know what that is, but again, everybody's going to be living large there. The creation of the Environmental and Economist Justice Initiative. Again, don't know what that is, but it sounds very woke. How about a clean energy task force at the Department of Energy? Two billion taxpayer dollars for that. Clean transportation, 621 billion. Now that is high speed rail emanating out of New York City and in California. They've tried that in the Golden State, it hasn't worked, but they're going to try it again. $621 billion. Clean housing construction. Does that mean more mops? I, my house is clean. $213 billion for clean housing construction. Green jobs, $700 billion for green jobs. Research and development, $180 billion. Water infrastructure, $111 billion. Digital infrastructure, $100 billion. I don't know what that is. I don't know any of this stuff but it's my money they're taking. Now, the world is getting warmer. That is a fact. But burning tax dollars is not going to help that. With trillions in earmarks, that means pet projects that are being funded by the federal government, you know the fraudsters will be very available in the coming years. The con artists love the color green, do they not? Now, no other country on this earth will spend close to $4 trillion on climate change. China is actually building more coal plants. So while American taxpayers pick up the enormous tab the rest of the world does what it wants to do. The USA should lead the fight against pollution. We should do that. We have the best technology, the smartest people, except in government, where there will be massive waste. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve the message by writing it. For more honest news analysis, please go to BillOReilly.com and please check out my new book, Killing the Mob. In a moment, something you might not know. This year marks 20 years since America's darkest day, September 11, 2001, and the Tunnel to Towers Foundation has been supporting America's frontline heroes ever since. When a first responder or military service member doesn't come home and young children are left behind, Tunnel to Towers pays off the mortgage to lift the financial burden for the family and bring their family some stability. For catastrophically injured vets and first responders, Tunnel to Towers builds mortgage-free smart homes, enabling our most severely injured heroes to live more independent lives. Our nation's heroes, people who are willing to die for us, need your help. So please don't wait. Join Tunnel to Towers on their mission to do good and help those heroes. Please donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's t 2t.org. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. Today, my 10th killing book comes out. It is called Killing the Mob, the Fight Against Organized Crime in America. I had a blast writing this book with Martin Dugard. Together, Dugard and I have sold almost 18 million copies of the Killing series that is the most successful book series of all time. In fact, there is another Killing book, number 11, coming later on this year. But Killing the Mob is going to, well, keep you up night. It will. And now I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. You have to buy this book because in it you will find out how the Mafia helped General Patton 
in World War II. I didn't know this, and I wrote a book called Killing Patton, but we discovered it. There is a direct link between organized crime, the mafia, Italian gangsters, and George Patton. Where do you see this? Why J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI chief, refused to investigate organized crime. He wouldn't even admit it existed. Why Sam Giancana, the Chicago godfather, wanted to kill, assassinate Lucille Ball's husband, Desi Arnaz. This is an amazing story that we uncovered. I have never heard this anywhere. And finally, how Giancana, a vicious guy, helped John F. Kennedy become president. All of this stuff is in Killing the Mob, and we will tell you exactly what happened to Teamster leader Jimmy Hoffa, minute by minute. Final thing in Killing the Mob, which is out today, as I mentioned, there are no heroes in this except Bobby Kennedy. He's the guy that really took down the mob or at least diminished their power. All the mobsters themselves, evil. Back in a moment. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are seven reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Monthly cash flow payouts of 10% annualized. Bonuses to 21% targeted. They strategically locate in lower risk, high demand areas people want to move to. New construction is short on supply. Real estate affords diversification and safety from stock market risk. Their short and long-term strategy provides for steady returns right now. NRIA is an industry leader with a 15-year proven track record. So, if you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, start your due diligence at nria.net. Or you can call 800-800-1414. That's easy. 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at NRIA.net. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.